afternoon. I'm Spot On Weather meteorologist Matthew Euler, and welcome to my latest video. And this one's titled What Happens in the Arctic. You notice I have the three dots after the Arctic term here in the title slide um, because there's a finishing point to this message that I'm going to share by the end of this video. So we have some interesting weather happening, and uh, let's go ahead and get right into today's video. First thing I want to start off with is information about the NAO or the North Atlantic Oscillation. All right, um, let me go and get my laser pointer out here. Okay, so the first thing I want to mention is specifically what is the NAO? Um, this is generally a periodic variation in the strength and position of the Icelandic low, which is up here to the north, um, generally in the vicinity of Iceland, which is this little area here, this landmass, and then the Azores High or the Bermuda High to the south. So the variation in strength between this area, the semi-permanent low pressure system known as the Icelandic low, and this semi-permanent high pressure system known as the Bermuda High or the Azores High. Now, throughout time, there's variations that can have an effect between these pressure patterns between these two systems. Uh, we can have variations in the strength and positioning of the systems that can have an effect on the weather in the eastern United States, um, resulting in a shifting jet stream location. And that shifting jet stream location results in different or various temperature and precipitation patterns. And there's two specific phases to the North Atlantic Oscillation. There is the positive phase as well as the negative phase. And with the negative phase, I kind of mentioned this in my last video, how with negative NAO phases, there's an east-based as well as a west-based. All right, so continuing on with our discussion on the NAO, let's, let's get into the phases here just as a review. The positive phase of the NAO features a strengthening of the Icelandic low and the Azores or Bermuda High pressure system that results in a general tighter pressure gradient or tighter packing of the isobars um, and a stronger west to east wind flow across the North Atlantic during the positive phase of the NAO. This allows colder air to drain off the North American continent rather than letting it build up and move south. And generally with a positive phase NAO, um, I don't know if you can really make it out. It's kind of small here uh, on the slide. Um, but in general, this blue dark arrow line here is your polar front jet stream, generally showing more of a west to east zonal flow to the jet stream. And along this west to east, stronger westerly wind flow, you get these upper level disturbances that rotate through this pattern, through the long wave pattern. And that, you know, you usually have frequent, weaker, short-lived um, systems that kind of come through from west to east. The negative phase, on the other hand, look what we have going on here in the negative phase. We have a weakening of this Icelandic low pressure system. Uh, we have a weaker gradient between that, the, not only the Icelandic low weakening, but then the, also the Azores Bermuda high weakening. And so we get weaker westerly winds. And this allows colder air to build up over Canada. And then ultimately, you see this dark arrow here for the negative phase of the NAO showing a movement of the coldest air from Canada south into the United States. Uh, this occurs via this deepening trough feature. The long wave trough deepens. That allows colder air to come down from Canada, specifically into the central and more specifically to the eastern United States during the negative phase of the NAO. And this also results in um, more of a, a snowstorm threat along the east coast of the United States. Above average snowfall across the east, um, again, more meridional, north to south polar front jet stream configuration, more intense, slower moving storm systems as well with a negative NAO, okay? Uh, you also see some of the features associated with the NAO's phases. You know, if a positive NAO phase, you have wet, uh, warmer and wetter conditions than normal. Um, across uh, northern Europe, you have drier than normal conditions across the Mediterranean. Uh, with a negative phase of the NAO, you get above normal snowfall in the eastern U.S., and then you also get a wetter than normal conditions across southern Europe, a Mediterranean area, and colder and drier than normal conditions across northern Europe, Norway, Sweden, Finland, the U.K., Wales, 
uh, France, Germany, those areas into Siberia. But here's one thing to really take note of. The NAO is not the only game in town, all right? There's a lot of other teleconnections out there that can either work with the phase of the NAO or against the phase of the NAO. An example of this would be constructive interference situation where you get a La Nina winter combined with a positive phase of the NAO and that would yield generally much warmer temps across the southeastern United States above normal conditions as indicated by this positive phase of the wintertime NAO here in the top portion of the graphic here in the upper left. So this is a constructive interference situation where you have two particular teleconnections working together. So, you know, we can look at NAO all day long is what I'm saying. And you also got to look at other teleconnections and what they're doing uh, and whether you're getting constructive interference or whether you're getting destructive interference where you have two opposing uh, teleconnections offsetting each other, so to speak. So now let's take a closer look at a positive NAO phase. These are the 500 millibar height anomalies during a positive NAO phase on the left. These are your surface temperature anomalies during a positive NAO phase on the right. And the purple shading indicates a troughing below normal heights, the orange coloring and yellow coloring above normal heights. So when you see purple coloring, think troughs, think, think colder than normal temperatures, think unsettled weather more in the way of storm activity and precipitation. When you see the orange coloring that indicates upper level ridges and warm and drier conditions. So with a positive phase NAO at 500 millibars, um, that's 18,000 feet above the ground where we live, uh, you see generally um, upper level ridging across the western Atlantic, so above average heights there. We got warmer temperatures associated with that ridging here on the right hand side graphic. Uh, the orange coloring indicating above normal temperatures here on the this chart here on the right, the temperature anomalies, uh, purple and blue coloring below normal temperatures. So with the ridge, positive NAO phase, ridge over the Western Atlantic, and you get more of warmer, milder temperature, warm or milder temperatures across the eastern US with a positive phase NAO. And meanwhile, with a positive phase NAO, your coldest temperatures are back into Western Canada, down into the Pacific Northwest and Northern Plains states you get colder air out over the over the western u.s generally the positive nao phase with a negative nao phase on the other hand things flip-flop the pattern switches um, generally what you have with a negative phase nao here at 500 millibar height anomalies you have anomalous troughing uh, generally stretching across just south of this anomalous blocking pattern the upper level ridge uh, higher the normal heights across greenland on uh, the icelandic region and below that Generally across the middle latitudes, you get below normal heights, these trough, the more troughing conditions across middle latitudes of the United States, across the Atlantic, on into parts of Europe with a negative NAO. And this feature, again, this blocking upper level ridging is definitely prevalent during negative phases of NAO, upper level height rises um, again. Over here on the right, we see the surface temperature anomalies during a negative NAO. Okay, so when we get this anomalous blocking pattern, upper level height rises into Greenland and even further west, points west from that in towards um, hearts of Hudson Bay, we generally get a cold air draining southeast from Canada and Alaska into the United States. And look at how below normal things are, below average temperatures across much of the eastern U.S. during the negative phase of the NAO. Um, and these are, by the way, these composites are clearly stated here. This was an example from January of 1966 with a negative NAO phase. Looking at the negative NAO subtypes. Now, I mentioned this in social media a few days ago. I also talked about this in my last video. Negative NAO phases, whether they're east-based or west-based, produce different results for the United States. Um, with a east-based negative NAO, you have negative NAO height anomalies located further eastward away from the North American continent during an east-based negative NAO. And your temperature anomalies here in the upper right show milder temperatures along the east coast of the United States with the coldest core of air back over portions of south central Canada into the western U.S. and the northern plain states with an east-based uh, negative NAO. With a west-based negative NAO on the other hand, now you got that Strong upper level ridging uh, moving into Greenland and extending even further west with the ridge axis. And you get much colder temperatures across the eastern United States. 
across the southern U.S. as well with a west-based negative NAF with those higher height anomalies further west of Greenland. Look at the temperature anomalies with a west-based NAO, much more extensive cold air funneling into the central and eastern United States, uh, below average temperatures coming straight down from the Arctic and Canada into the U.S. So there's there's very much different phases or subtypes of the negative NAO that you re really makes a difference where these anomalously higher heights, that upper level ridge really positions itself. It makes a difference. So just in general, what's the west-based negative NAO? We see favorable positioning of the geopotential height anomalies, those upper level heights, higher height anomalies, with that negative phase of the NAO appearing to enhance snowfall potential in the eastern US when we get the west-based negative NAO, okay? We get more enhanced snowfall potential in the east. And generally what we look for is high pressure near Greenland and then a polar vortex or some type of polar low pressure area somewhere near 50 degrees north latitude and 50 degrees west longitude. And that generally correlates to an increased potential for wintry weather along the U.S. East Coast. And the atmospheric features in that west space negative NEO tend to disrupt the polar front jet stream, um, causing it to buckle and move southward into the southeastern U.S. So we have a, a trough carving itself out across the eastern U.S. during a west-based negative NAO. That's going to allow much colder air to stream southward right on down into the southeastern U.S. to the east coast. By the way, the source of this information is from the North Carolina Climate Office. Additionally, with a west-based negative NAO, this generally allows colder Arctic air to be transported south, as I previously mentioned. That's going to increase the likelihood of interaction between northern and southern jet streams. We call that a phasing situation when you get the two um, pieces of energy from the northern stream and the southern stream to merge at just the right time and at just the right location and when you get a 500 millibar trough to just tilt to a negative configuration with the axis extending from northwest to southeast. So west-based negative NAO that favors the colder air to come further south. That's going to increase your thermal or temperature gradient. That's going to um, cause that jet stream, you know, you get more of those accelerated regions of wind speeds within the jet core axis. Those are known as jet maxes or jet streaks. And you get the right phasing of those jet streaks or jet maxes. You get the energy at 500 millibars, that positive vorticity to merge from the northern stream and the southern stream. And you get a phasing situation. And again, that occurs during the west based negative NAO. Now, this can lead to rapid, intense surface cyclogenesis surface storm development over the southern U.S. and then that system can then ride up the east coast. Here are some of the past NAO episodes. Um, the red vertical bars indicating positive phases of the NAO. The blue uh, bars, vertical bars here indicating the negative phases of the NAO. Um, the last really major negative phase NAO we had around this time of year uh, what it occurred back in December of 2010. And if you look at December 2010, look how far down this blue vertical bar dips. You go right across the x-axis here. You look at negative 4. This value is a below a magnitude of negative 4 on this particular NAO index scale back in December of 2010. So a sharply negative NAO in that particular December. Um, but if you notice for the most part, you know, since, well, let's say 1990, we've seen a lot more, what appears to be a lot more positive phases to the NAO. Uh, we've had a couple of decent drops here. One occurred back in the 1990s, and then, of course, that December 2010 situation. Uh, but just like to show you kind of like how the NAO has changed over the years. This goes all the way back prior to 1870. Now, let's take a look specifically at December 2010, and let's see what was going on. If we look at the upper level height, heights and anomalies in meters here, the NSAP reanalysis, um, any of the orange coloring indicates above normal heights, the blue coloring indicating below normal heights. So again, think above normal heights, the orange coloring associated with ridges and the blue coloring below normal heights. And so we had a very strong, um, strongly negative North Atlantic oscillation. You see ridging extending northwestward into Greenland and even just to the west of Greenland in December of 2010. And we had anomalously low heights across the central and eastern U.S., extending across the Atlantic into Northern Europe, okay? If we look at the temperature anomalies here in the middle, mean temperature anomalies in degrees Fahrenheit, 
Uh, you see very cold temperatures December 2010, um, generally from the Rocky Mountains extending eastward. The purple coloring there, by the way, are um, air temperatures that are on the average of uh, about 10 to 15 degrees Fahrenheit below normal. Even Florida was had a very cold December in 2010 where you know places like Orlando were 11 to 12 degrees Fahrenheit below normal. So this is what happened with this type of similar forecasted configuration uh, of what we're looking at here coming up uh, in December. Here are the departures from normal as far as precipitation, brown shading indicating below normal precipitation for December 2010. Um, with no coloring, that just the regular white shading that indicates near normal precipitation. And then above normal precipitation occurred in California, up the west coast, up Interstate 5 into Oregon. Um, so in general, you know, we had near normal precip in December 2010 for the east, uh, a little bit above normal up towards Maine. But for the most part, up and down the eastern seaboard, you know, generally near average, we had below normal um, precip there across Louisiana, Mississippi, and the deep south. So I just wanted to kind of show you what December 2010 looked like. Now let's move ahead and take and let's examine the 500 millibar heights and anomaly forecast charts. Um, we're going to start off with today's upper air pattern at 500 millibars. Now on each of the slides as I move forward, the graphic on the left is going to be the, the GFS ensemble forecasting system and on the right will be the European ensemble system. Okay, so what we're looking at, you know, whether we look at, we're just doing some comparisons here. Today, the 500 millibar Jeffs um, generally in fairly good agreement with the um, European EPS showing troughing over the Midwest in both cases, both models. We see some ridging out over the uh, Western Atlantic. Uh, there is a higher height center located in the vicinity of um, the Cuba area, Hispaniola area. Uh, but we do have this digging trough that's now in the Midwest. We have a more progressive uh, look to the pattern. Uh, we expect as this trough pivots to the east, we're going to see colder temperatures in the east. That's going to last basically about 48 hours or two days before another transient ridge moves in and reestablishes it itself from the west. Now let's move ahead in the forecast for the upper air charts at 500 millibars. Again, Jeff's on the left, European ensemble prediction system on the right. And so by the 2nd of December, we see this orange coloring across the east in both ensemble forecasts, which is indicative of uh, upper level ridging, uh, milder temperatures, um, temperatures starting to get a little bit milder at this point, with the troughing mainly from um, north central, northern Canada, the Arctic area, north central Canada, working its way southward into south central Canada along the Pacific Northwest troughing. Um, this is an expansive um, higher height area here across the Gulf of Mexico. That ridge extends from the Gulf of Mexico right on up to New England for Friday the 2nd of December. Now let's move ahead to the 5th of December. Now this will be next Monday. Uh, we're starting to see a flattening out of that ridge. So you notice the difference here? See how higher these um, higher height anomalies get all the way up into New England and southeastern Canada on the 2nd. But then by the time we get to the 5th next Monday, we have more of a flatter look. All right, these, these black solid lines are your height contours. And so we're getting more of a westy east zonal flow to the jet stream. We have a very cold lobe of air associated with this upper level low over Hudson Bay. Very cold air upstream over Canada. And then by the time we get to next Monday, we see upper level ridging expanding into parts of Alaska with that downstream troughing into central Canada. Again, this look, we got a flatter ridge here. We still do see troughing. This ridge axis is just a little bit further to the west into Alaska, so it's allowing for that troughing into northern and central California by next Monday. Both these models are fairly good agreement with the placement of the upper level ridge as well as the placement of this cold lobe. It appears that the Jeffs on today's 12Z run for the 30th of November has a stronger lobe of colder air and anomalously lower heights as compared to the European EPS. But overall, what does this mean? This, this general pattern, we go more zonal west to east, is, you know, we could be looking at more frequent cold frontal passages across the eastern U.S. Uh, we see the strong ridge holding, providing this initial resistance by next Monday of this colder air dropping into the east. Uh, but this is just a, you know, initial resistance, okay? This ridge is eventually going to break down as we see multiple shots of colder air filter into the eastern U.S. But again, we're, we're expecting a lot of ups and downs in temperatures into the first week of December. Moving ahead now, upper air pattern for 7 December. We move, we move forward two days 
And now we're seeing this upper level ridge positioned over South Florida into the southeastern Gulf of Mexico. The ridging is now expanding more over the Western Atlantic, vice from the Gulf of Mexico up into New England. And we're starting to see this low but very cold air, the upper level low is situated over the western portions of Hudson Bay. So this is really becoming firmly established by this point. I really like the position of this shortwave ridge axis across right along the west coast of North America. This is a favorable ridge axis position for um, troughing further to the east, further downstream into the central and eastern US. Um, this ridge again is providing resistance, but for how long will this ridge hold up is the question. Uh, I like again this axis where it's located on both of these models. now. The upper level ridge axis along the west coast of North America is stronger on the Jeffs model than it is on today's 12Z European Ensemble model. Uh, but in general, we're starting to see, again, we see I have that flat look, that west to east highly zonal jet, polar front jet, very cold air situated over the northern U.S. by the 7th of December. And then let's move to the 9th of December now. Looking at the Jeffs on the left, the European EPS on the right, and what happened? Wow, where did those higher heights go along the eastern seaboard from Florida up to the mid-Atlantic. Where did those go? They're gone, all right? That ridge by the 9th of December has completely been broken down. It's we have a completely flattened look. We no longer see the ridge showing up on the Jeffs model here on the 9th of December. We still see a little bit of the higher heights across the deep south, East Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi. But now we're starting to see Look what's happening with these anomalous upper level high building into Greenland by the 9th, next Friday, a week from this Friday. We're starting to see more of the colder air and that troughing develop from New England extending down to the mid-Atlantic by the 9th of December. This ridging is very strong over Greenland. It's actually stronger on the European Ensemble Prediction System. Uh, it's even stronger than on the Jeffs, but very similar positioning. See the trend here? And that's what I'm very much interested in. We also see more troughing or lower heights across the western U.S. on the European EPS for the Friday the 9th of December. Now, moving ahead to the 11th of December, look at these higher height anomalies continuing to push west. West, west, west. We're starting to get into more of a west-based negative NAO situation here. A stronger looking uh, negative NAO, west-based NAO here on the European Ensemble Prediction System. This is the 11th of December. Um, so this is uh, not this upcoming weekend, but the following weekend. And look at the blue troughing. Look at the lower heights, lower than normal heights across the eastern U.S. Um, on this particular Jeff's run here for the 11th, we're starting to see that close low over the southern tip of Hudson Bay. And look at this ridging setting up across the western U.S., that strong ridging and anomalous upper level heights in Greenland is occurring by the 11th of December, extending westward, like I mentioned. We have a block over the top, higher heights over the top, over the higher latitudes. Both of these models in excellent agreement with where the block is setting up, the general spatial location. That's what I'm watching here, uh, looking at the trends. I'm going to watch this, the magnitude of this upper level trough across the western U.S. This, this is going to be huge. Because if this were to build higher heights and become stronger, this ridging out west, this trough is going to be deeper in the east, okay? Whenever you get the higher heights or the higher pressures over the northern latitudes, that tends to force the colder air southward. Bottom line here. But I'm going to watch the magnitude of this upper level ridge by the 11th of December. That looks very interesting to me. And then by the 13th of December, um, let's take a look. Look at this. All right, just the, the GFS ensemble showing that troughing well established from Maine all the way down to Florida. And we see, you know, the higher heights completely over the top across the higher latitudes. Um, the European ensemble prediction system showing a even broader based ridging situation setting up west of Greenland. The west based NAO is here. The west based NAO is here. And what a shock. Not a shock. You see much uh, lower than normal heights now, mid-Atlantic up to New England along the East Coast. Um, if this PNA again goes more positive across the western portions of North America, we could see a very cold period across the East. Now let's take a look at the teleconnections, constructive versus destructive interference. Okay, so let's take a, the, like a look at the European Ensemble Prediction System first, the AO um, here in the upper left. It is crashing negative, okay? It's, it's going to basically, the latest forecast showing it going to a magnitude of negative 4 from the 7th on to the 12th of December. 
slight rise after that. The NAO, this has been the talk all over social media, going sharply negative, going down to a negative four value, um, generally from the 6th of December all the way out to the 11th and 12th of December, sharply negative NAO. We look at the um, EPO, Eastern Pacific Oscillation, negative, eventually coming up towards neutral before dropping negative again after the 10th of December. And then the European EPS PNA forecast. Now this one to me is key right here, this bottom right graphic. Um, the ensemble mean is a green line, and then you have this white line, which is the control. Now, the European ensemble prediction system, the control, European control is showing it going positive, the PNA, around the 13th of December, while the ensemble mean takes it closer to neutral conditions. But regardless, 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 this PNA is getting closer to neutral territory. It is on the climb, it is on the rise. It starts off very negative the first couple days of December. That's going to favor troughing out in the western U.S., but then it comes up pretty good, um, closer to neutral around the 5th, drops off slightly more negative to the 7th of December, and then comes back up towards neutral. The higher this goes, okay, the greater the positive or the higher this increase occurs with the PNA, the greater the chance we get upper level ridging in the western portions of North America. That's going to deepen the trough over the central and eastern U.S. I'm watching that closely. The Jeff's model, teleconnections forecast, AO right here in the upper left, negative, sharply negative, very similar in agreement to the European EPS. And then over here in the upper right, NAO going sharply negative, very similar to the, um, to the EPS, European Ensemble Prediction System. And then we've got the um, Eastern Pacific Oscillation, Jeff's forecast, showing it negative, coming up near neutral from the 7th to the 9th to the 10th of December, dropping negative again after that. And then the bottom right showing the Jeff's V12 PNA forecast. Are you noticing the trends here in the ensemble predict the ensemble forecast models? Whether we're talking European or the Jeff's V12, they're going up higher and higher with each passing run. We're seeing a climb in the PNA closer to neutral territory. And the Jeff's V12 is showing a neutral PNA by the time we get to the 13th or the 14th of December. So this, this is important, okay? Do we have constructive interference or destructive interference? When all these teleconnections work together and, and, and basically move towards a similar outcome, we call that constructive interference. Um, right now with a negative PNA, we still have that trough kind of hanging on across the western U.S. That's destructive interference. Um, that doesn't favor the colder temperatures in the east when you have that negative PNA. So I'm really curious how this is going to turn out. If we look at longer range uh, CFS, Temperature anomaly forecast, look at this. Upper left, by the way, blue shading below normal temps, uh, orange, yellows, um, generally above normal temperatures. Look where the warmest temperatures are occurring in all these frames, okay? Up across the higher latitudes, over the top, of, you know, I call it over the top, a block over the top. Um, but the blue coloring, look at the, the um, colder temperatures. This, these are forecast temperature anomalies in degrees Celsius. Um, look at the blue shading. Just, just pay attention to the trends here. 10 December to 20 December right here in the upper left. Cold extending from the Rockies east. Then we see 15 to 25 December, Christmas. The cold is getting colder. The colder air is really starting to establish itself, entrench itself across the upper Midwest, all the way to the east coast, all the way down to the deep south, Gulf Coast included, 15 to 25 December, below normal temps. Bottom left, 20 December all the way to 30 December to end the year pretty much. Look at how entrenched the east is in colder than normal temperatures. And then finally, 25 December, Christmas Day, right on into the new year, 4 January of 2023. This pattern continues. So with a ne west-based negative NAO, you can see this progression. And this is what's so cool to watch with that west-based negative NAO, how the pattern is progressing, progressing over time. A strong upper level ridge initially over the Gomex, Gulf of Mexico, extending northeast along the east coast, getting squashed, getting flattened over time. And it, this CFS run shows it greatly. Here is the GFS, Stratospheric Polar Vortex forecast. I wanted to just compare yellow colors, by the way, indicate um, warming temps in the stratosphere. Um, in the wintertime, sometimes we get events known as sudden stratospheric warming events. And that can act to weaken the polar vortex, displace it off the North Pole, or even split it into two specific lobes. 
Here is the forecast for 16 December of this year. This is based off today's 12 ZGFS run, showing an elongation to the polar vortex. But look at this warming over here across Siberia, uh, up here at the top portion of the image. And then this was the 15 January 2021. This was um, the stratospheric warming associated you know, prior to the splitting. Uh, you kind of see two lobes already. Uh, but this really enhanced that splitting polar vortex in the stratosphere in January of 2021. I think it's really interesting to compare past events to current events, forecast events. The warming is very similar in these particular areas, um, but that location is different, right? You kind of see with the January 2021, um, the warming occurred uh, closer to right over the North Pole uh, as compared to what's forecast right now on the GFS run. But this is something to keep an eye on. The polar vortex looks generally elongated uh, through December. Here's the European and the Jeff's stratospheric polar vortex forecast um, for the latest European run here. This is 10 December forecast here on the left, showing um, above normal warming of temperatures. Um, actually, no, these are heights. So we have higher heights extending. This is at, and by the way, this is also at the 50 millibar level above the ground, high, high up into the atmosphere. But generally we have higher than normal heights associated with that NAO and the block um, extending from Greenland West. And we have below normal heights and troughing across Southern Canada and the mid latitudes. Over here on the right is the Jeff's um, stratospheric polar vortex forecast showing that elongated shape once again. You see the warming over here on the, um, over towards the Siberian Eurasian side of the globe. Okay, see the warming here, the brown coloring indicates warming in the stratosphere. Um, this is back up at 10 hectopascals or 10 millibar level as well. But overall, both models are showing an elongated, uh, weaker than normal stratospheric polar vortex into early December. Here's the MJO, Mad Julian Oscillation Forecast, showing the, um, this is the, the G, uh, this is actually the uh, GFS ensemble. The green solid line here indicating the um, ensemble mean, showing the um, MGO going into phase eight briefly, then into the null phase, the inner circle here, before rotating, just hanging on into the null phase, really. The GFS operational model, this aqua color line showing also a very similar outcome as we had in early December going briefly into phase eight before transitioning into the null phase, this small inner circle. Um, and then we see the um, comparisons to 1983 again, uh, this is the October to December 83 MJO plot. Again, the blue line here is the, um, the MJO, what it did in December 83 compared to what it's forecast to do this year. And I'm just amazed at the similarities um, between what the forecast is here in the middle and the left this year to what occurred in um, the October to December 83 time period. Really very similar tracks of the MJO. Here are some additional forecasts for the MJO coming up. Jeff's V12 showing that weak phase eight, then into null phase. Um, the ECMWF showing a weak phase eight, also in concurrence with Jeff's, going into the null phase for the MJO. And then here's the CFS V2, uh, kind of just straddling that phase eight, phase one, then ultimately rotating into the null phase as well on the CFS. Here are the MJO temp composites as a reminder for December, January, and February. Blue coloring indicating below normal temperatures, orange coloring above normal temperatures. Um, so generally phases eight, phases one and two are all, are all um, associated with colder temperature phases in the eastern U.S., whereas phases uh, four, five, six, and seven are associated with warmer temperature phases across the eastern U.S. And then during La Nina winters, you typically see convection uh, usually focused in the Western Pacific Ocean. So La Nina winters, you have warmer than normal sea surface temperatures, which favors rising vertical air motion and MJO phases six and seven. Here are my final thoughts on today's video. Okay, first of all, going to stress this, reliance on the ensemble models. That's gonna give the better grasp on the future projected upper air pattern. I'll tell you what, the deterministic models have been all over the place just over the past 48 hours uh, with such an anomalous upper air pattern expected to take place with that anomalous blocking uh, over the top into Greenland and the points westward. Um, right now, the deterministic models, one run will be colder across the east, next run is completely mild. I don't trust deterministic models at this point, this far out. 
Um, definitely looking at the ensembles. They're in great agreement right now on the projected pattern, upper air pattern. A sharply negative NAO, definitely in the forecast to develop extensive height rises from Greenland into the Arctic region as we turn the calendar over to December. Um, so this anomalous pattern is going to result in some changes to our weather, our sensible weather. Initially, we'll see destructive interference where, you know, we've got a couple pieces that are destructively interfering with a negative NAO. Uh, one of those is that negative PNA pattern that's associated with troughing across the western U.S. And, you know, we still do have La Nina going on, and that also could act to offset that negative NAO and the colder temperatures across the eastern U.S. So destructive interference initially. However, when we talk specifically about the PNA pattern, it's forecast to become more neutral to potentially even slightly positive by the middle of December. This is going to act to neutralize that troughing feature in the western U.S. It's going to act to basically, potentially, if it goes slightly positive to the PNA, that could ultimately flip it from a trough to a ridge across the western portions of the U.S. into western Canada. Again, I'm watching that closely. The MJO is briefly going to rotate into phase eight. That would be associated with that colder phase, phase eight, colder phase in the central and eastern U.S., but it's not going to last there very long before moving into the null phase. When it moves into the null phase, we're expecting minimal impacts to the U.S. as far as the temperature regime goes. And this is my final slide, I believe. Yeah, it is. Okay, what I'm thinking right now, based on what I'm seeing, there's gonna be a lots of ups and downs in the temperature pattern or regime across the eastern U.S. all the way into the first week of December. We're going to see a transient or progressive pattern of these troughs and ridges kind of moving west to east across the United States. But what you're going to eventually see is those troughs getting a little bit deeper. And as they dig a little bit deeper, they start to flatten the upper level ridge situated over the Gulf of Mexico. So that's going to break down that subtropical ridge over the Gomex. And what eventually is going to happen is you're going to get a longer wave trough carved out across the eastern U.S. And we're going to see more longer lasting colder temperatures specifically after 12 December across the eastern U.S. Now, CFS indicating that colder pattern, which I've already shown you the CFS output, indicating that colder pattern right on into the new year, into 2023 and early January. I'm really expecting a good two to three week period of below normal temps across the east based on what I'm seeing. This is based on what I'm seeing right now today on the 30th of November. Now, can this change? Absolutely. But this is what I'm seeing right now. The stratospheric polar vortex is going to remain in a generally weakened or elongated state per the latest model guidance. And by the way, just to throw that out here, La Nina, I can't forget about our La Nina. Um, it's in a weak phase right now. Um, the latest temperature anomaly is running um, 0.88 degrees Celsius below normal in the Nino 3.4 region in the equatorial uh, areas of the Pacific. Storm activity. Now, I've seen talks about potential winter storms along the East Coast around the middle of December. Um, storm activity is definitely expected. I definitely agree with that. Uh, I do expect storm activity to increase along the East Coast between 15 and 20 December, somewhere in there, as we see a slight easing to the North Atlantic Oscillation. That negative, sharply negative NAO is going to start kind of climbing a little bit closer to the neutral line. It'll still be negative, but it won't be as sharply negative. Um, I took a good look at uh, Paul Cosin and uh, Uccellini. I was taking a look at that Northeast Snowstorms of Volume 1 and 2. And one of the biggest takeaways from that, I shared some of these thoughts last night in Twitter, social media. Um, they talk about a more favorable East Coast cyclogenesis pattern during the easing of negative NAO periods. Um, so when you're sharply negative to the NAO phase, um, that's not really the time where you really see an increased East Coast cyclones development, cyclone development, when you're sharply negative, kind of reaching that peak of the negative NAO, you really don't see the increased frequency of storm development on the East Coast until that NAO starts moving closer to neutral conditions. All right. Um, so very interesting stuff. Um, Coasting Uccellini, that's a great book, Northeast Snowstorms. If you don't have it and you're a snow lover and you live in the eastern U.S., um, that's a great book to take a look at, believe me. Northeast Snowstorms. Just take a look at that, Google that. All right, that wraps the video up today. I tell you what, this is gonna be an interesting pattern. What I enjoy the most out about meteorology and the atmosphere in general is how we can watch these transitions taking place, right? You can tie in all these puzzle pieces and there's many variables involved in winter forecasting. 
you know, from examining the upper air pattern, taking a look at past history, past episodes of specific similar outcomes, okay, to what the forecast might show. Um, additionally, looking at the teleconnections forecast, determining whether you're having constructive or destructive interference. Uh, are the teleconnections all working in the same manner, in the same direction, or do we have opposing teleconnections? Um, so there's a ton of puzzle pieces involved. The polar vortex, also a very big piece each winter, as many of you know. But MGO forecast, convection, where that shows up, in the in, you know whether it's in the Indian Ocean or Pacific Ocean, what happens way, way far away from the U.S. really matters. And to get back to my title, what happens in the Arctic does not stay in the Arctic, okay? And what I mean by that is the stronger anomalous upper level height rises and the warmer the normal temps in the Arctic, that is, you know, what happens up there with the warming is going to typically dislodge colder air down into the middle latitudes. And when you get the warmer air and the higher heights over the northern latitudes, the middle latitudes are going to have lower heights and colder temperatures. It just, it's kind of like a flip in the atmosphere. It's the way the atmosphere responds um, to the anomaly, all right? That's it, everybody. I hope everybody enjoyed this video. Um, that's all I've got for right now. Hoping to get another teleconnections discussion video out here soon because there's just so much to discuss. You know, my, my longer extended teleconnections videos um, because there's just so much interesting things going on as we get ready to transition to the month of December. All right, everybody. That's all I've got for now. Until next time, take care and God bless everyone.